Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade with a new video in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 series. This video is supplemental to the previous video on data types. The information in that video is still correct, but it's now incomplete as of 2.3. Hopefully you've watched that video, but very briefly, I just want to repeat, a data type is an attribute of the data which really tells a computer how to treat that data and defines the operations that can be done on that data. And this is true about a lot of things that you're already familiar with. For example, saying five times five makes sense, but saying John times John doesn't because we understand that a number is a certain type of thing which you can do multiplication on, but a person is not a thing that you can do multiplication on. So what are these new data types in 2.3? Well, there are two of them, method variables and structs. So with these two data types, the full list of data types in 2.3 are now strings, real numbers, arrays, structs, method variables, hexadecimal values, booleans, pointers, enums, undefined, non, and infinity, where structs and method variables are the two new ones. All the prior data types still exist and haven't really changed, with a slight caveat about arrays, which we'll cover in a future tutorial. For each of these new data types, we're gonna cover what they are, how to create them, and very, very briefly, what you can do with them. Both method variables and structs are actually quite powerful, and there's a lot to say about them. And I'm gonna make several tutorials about each of them. A method variable is a variable that has been assigned a function. Unlike prior versions, you can now create your own functions and you can actually take these functions and assign them to a variable. And then that variable will reference that function. They use the form variable name equals function, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then open brackets, close brackets, where whatever you put in the brackets is the body of the function. So you can see this created down here where a method equals function and then you can put whatever you want in here or another method equals function and here we're naming arguments as well. The important part is that this variable will now reference a function. Once you have a method variable, you can actually use it very much like you used to use scripts in prior versions of GameMaker with a few very important exceptions that we'll cover in its own tutorial. So here we have a couple examples of method variables right here we are creating the function. You can see a version without arguments and a version with arguments. And we are saving a reference to this function in this variable, so that this variable now holds a reference to this function. Let's run this in the debugger to see what I mean. So here we are in the debugger. We can go to this first line. We can advance and see that now the variable say hello has a reference to this function. You can't see anything, but you can tell that there is a reference to a function there. We can see the same thing for say something and say goodbye. Structs are a type of data that hold other types of named data. You can think of it a lot like a container of variables, or as the manual puts it, a lightweight object. The variable itself is not the data, but it's a reference to that data, and it can be created in two different ways. The first is with the struct literal. This follows a very similar form to an array, except instead of using square brackets, it uses curly brackets. And instead of simply having the values separated by a comma, it uses the form variable name, colon, then the value, then the comma. So variable name, colon, value, comma, variable name, colon, value. And if you had more variables down here, you would add a comma and so on. There is a second way to create structs, and that is with a constructor. However, we'll deal with that in the tutorial on structs. Structs are very powerful, and you can do a lot with them. In fact, this is where thinking of them as lightweight objects is useful, because a lot of what you can do with objects in GameMaker, you can also do with structs. Again, like I said, very powerful, and we will cover them in detail in their own tutorials. So here is an example of creating a struct using the struct literal form. On the slide, I had it all on one line, but especially with larger structs, it's very common to write them like this, where you put the variable colon value followed by a comma on each line individually. And like I said, you can see that a struct is essentially a container for other variables. So here we have a struct of stuff which holds a number, a string, and another function. It could even hold a struct or an array or other type of data structure being nested as deeply as you want. This is the other way to make a struct down here using the keyword new and a constructor. But for this to work, you write the constructor yourself and we're gonna cover that in a later tutorial. Just know that if you were to use this form, this variable right here would also hold a struct. All right, let's run this in the debugger. So here we go, we're inside the debugger, and I actually had to skip over the creation because 
There's currently some issues with the debugger and 2.3. I'm sure they'll get ironed out soon, but structs don't update very well in them. But you can see right now that we have our struct of stuff that just like an array, it is a reference to the struct and that then inside the struct, we have the various variables. We have number, string, and my function, which just like these other functions is a variable that holds a reference to a function. So in summary, data has a type. Type determines what can be done with the data. All the old data types are the same as they were before, but in 2.3, there are two new data types and they are method variables and structs. All of the links to the slides are below and that's it. Thanks for watching.